What is going on, Raider Nation? It's your boy Sanjeet. Wow. Uh, we have some uh we have some interesting news, man, and we're gonna talk about it. I haven't been live in a couple of days. Um, I'm sorry, a couple of weeks, honestly. It's I have been over a month at this point, but uh we're gonna talk about it, man. There's some uh there's some interesting stuff that's kind of happened, you know. Uh, today was the day that teams by one o'clock had to get their roster down from uh, 90 players down to 85. And we're now we're now down to 84 because the Raiders not only cut five players, but we traded away Tyree Gillespie, the Las Vegas Raiders, a guy who we just took last year in the fourth round has been traded, which is kind of crazy to think because. I like Tyree Gillespie. I like where he was at. I like where his game was. I liked him from a player perspective, but Tyree Gillespie was also drafted for the Gus Bradley scheme, right? Tyree Gillespie was not drafted for the, the Raiders, right? Um, it's going to be an interesting, man. It's going to be very interesting. I see your guys' comments coming on. Uh, thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate it as always, but we're going to talk about all these different things. Uh, we're going to start with the Tyree Gillespie thing, man, because I think that's the the, the biggest move that the Raiders have made. Uh, the other five guys that we released, we'll talk about. But what's crazy and what a lot of people might not realize is we only have to get down to 85. But we're down to 84 with the trade of Gillespie, which means the Raiders are going to sign someone. It has to be a tackle, right? It has to be a right tackle. Like, I don't see why the Raiders would go out and get anyone other than a right tackle. In fact, one of the guys we cut today was Tyrone Wheatley Jr., who played tackle for us, and he really wasn't that good, right? So uh, I think the Raiders are going to bring in a, tap, a tackle. We're going to talk about all that plus more a little bit later on. Um, we're we're, we're going to talk, man. We're, we're going to really get into this, and I really want to get into some, some comments uh, Ty Davis said, uh, so they traded Tyree. What did they get? Uh, right now, I'm seeing that it's going to be a late round pick. Uh, who knows? Maybe that's a six. Maybe that's a seventh. We're going to talk about all of this, man. Uh, I'm sure you guys will see it on Twitter. I have Twitter up right now, so I'm sure I, I could potentially see it as well. Um, but I want to just give a quick shout out to some of you guys that are here already because I always appreciate anyone that comes on live and comments. Um, so shout out to Steven Henson. Said we traded Gully. Uh, Anthony, shout out to you, Raider Zilla, NorCal, Raider Jesse, shout out to you, who's a member of this channel. If you guys are not a member, man, become a member. It really supports the channel. It really helps me to, to be able to do certain things, uh, knowing that I have this many members, this many people supporting the channel. Uh, and there's a lot of you guys here, man. And, and that is one of the reasons why I'm able to do the, uh, the film breakdowns, uh, because those get demonetized, uh, all, all the time. Uh, so shout out to you, NorCal Raider Jesse, uh, you said we traded Gillespie and released five. We're going to talk about all of that. Um, Luis said, Sanji, my man always makes time to listen to your insights. Much appreciated since I don't always have time to keep up the news. So I rely on you big time. Big shout out to you, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate all of you guys, man, for reals. I, I really, really, really do appreciate it. Uh, if you guys could hit up that, hit that like button, I would appreciate that as well because then that helps the YouTube algorithm. Uh, it lets them know that this video is a video that you guys like. Let's talk about it, though, man. All right, so we get rid of Tyree Gillespie, right? Why? Why would the Raiders get rid of Tyree Gillespie? And I, I'm going to be straightforward with you guys. Uh, the thing with Tyree Gillespie is he was, he was a Gus Bradley fit, right? First and foremost, that's the first thing we have to think about. Uh, Gus Bradley took him in the fourth round, not Josh McDaniels, not Dave Ziegler. Uh, on top of that, when you trade away a guy like Tyree Gillespie, you're basically saying that he wasn't going to make the roster regardless. And Tyree Gillespie does have value. Right. He's about to enter his second year, which means you have three full seasons of a guy who is a fourth round pick on a rookie contract. So Gillespie over the next three seasons is probably going to make like two and a half million dollars in total. Maybe it's closer to three. Uh, so the Raiders are going to trade this guy away because he was likely not going to make the roster anyways. By trading him away, uh, someone else is going to give you a pick for that. Now, yeah, he was a fourth round pick. In my opinion, all picks are super valuable. I know some people look at like sixth and seventh round picks and say, you know, you don't get guys that are going to be that good. But if you're going to cut a player anyways, you might as well get something for that player. Uh, so uh, you trade away Gillespie, who was a fourth round pick. Wasn't really going to be a scheme for, for Patrick Graham, at least in my opinion. Uh, Gillespie played a lot of post safety at Missouri. Um, I personally liked him at Missouri, but I totally understand that Patrick Graham's scheme is different. Uh, Patrick Graham also wants his own guys. So Daron Harmon, as an example, is 
is a Patrick Graham guy. Uh, so Patrick Graham's going to want Deron Harmon. And you know what's interesting? I actually just noticed this today while I was watching some film. Uh, yeah, the other day when, when we were playing, uh, the two starting safeties for the Raider were Jonathan Abram and Trayvon Merrick. Those two guys started. They all, they only played one drive, but they started. Uh, those two guys were our starting safeties, Abram and Merrick. But when those guys came out on the second drive, guess who came in? It wasn't Tyree Gillespie. The guy that came in when Merrick and Abram came out were Gron Harmon uh, as well as Roger Teamer. Those two guys were the next lined guys to come in. And I'm going to be honest, you guys. I think Gron Harmon as a free safety, right, as Trayvon Merrick's backup makes sense. I think Roger Teamer as a strong safety, which would be Jonathan Abram's backup, makes sense. Tyree Gillespie didn't make a ton of sense. Uh, Tyree Gillespie, uh, he, I think he was listed as a strong safety on the depth chart, but he didn't make sense that you're going to keep a guy like that on the roster. Uh, typically, you keep five safeties, and I think the fifth safety has to be one of the more versatile guys. Uh, it could potentially be a guy like Isaiah Paul Amal. Maybe it's Bryce Cosby. Uh, maybe you keep an extra guy like, like uh, the rookie Webb that we just picked up who's been making a ton of plays. Maybe he's the guy. Right. Maybe he's the guy that the, the Raiders um, end up keeping and, and say instead of five safeties, we keep four with a guy like Webb, who may be a little versatile. A guy like Nate Hobbs is technically versatile as well. Uh, so I think from the from a schematic perspective, it doesn't make sense. On top of that, um, he wasn't coming in and playing, right? Tyree Gillespie was not the guy coming in. We had four other safeties in front of him. I think that was a smart decision. Get rid of a guy, get something back for a guy who you invested a fourth round pick in. Um, let's let's see what happens, man. Let's let's really see what happens. Uh, people are saying we're getting back a conditional pick. Not 100% sure exactly what that means. Um, in my opinion, I think when it comes to the whole conditional pick and stuff like that, uh, I, I think it could be based off of how good Tyree Gillespie does, if he starts, how many plays. Maybe it's related to tackles. It could be a lot of different things, but... Uh, Maybe it's just a seventh round pick. Either way, I will take that pick over cutting a guy for free, right? At least in my opinion. Um, but I want to know what you guys think, man, about Tyree Gillespie. Uh, do you guys think it was a bad move to cut Tyree Gillespie? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you guys could hit that thumbs up button, man, I would really appreciate it. Dreaded one says we have almost 300 people here. Let's get some more likes. Uh, as you guys know, that's always uh, super helpful. Um Akis said a surprise trade for sure. I was surprised too. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Um, I, I think Tyree Gillespie in my eyes was the fifth safety on the Raiders roster, but they may have seen something. They may have seen a guy flash, right? A Tyree Gillespie getting traded means there's a fifth guy there that they feel could potentially have some more potential. Um, either way, it's going to be very, very, very interesting. Uh, Edgar, what's going on, man? I appreciate it. Uh, Scotty said, love your show. Always tune in to you first. Big shout out to you, man. I always appreciate all of you guys that are here. Anthony Rua said, we drafted him in the fourth round and got him for a fourth pick. A uh, good value. Uh, is that confirmed that Tyree Gillespie was traded for a fourth round? Um, I, I, didn't, I don't see that. Um, maybe it's here somewhere. But um, either way, man, uh, I'm, I'm okay with what, what we trade him for. A fourth round pick would actually be a major steal in my, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, man, I always appreciate it. Uh, all the, all the comments, Gabriel said, this is the first time catching me live. I appreciate that, man, for real. So I really, really do appreciate that. Um, so it's going to be interesting. And I also do want to talk about some of the cuts because I think the Raiders cuts are, are massive, man. I, I think it really makes a difference. Um, almighty said, I thought they traded, uh, Josh Jacobs when I saw you live. She's, you know, it's crazy. I, I don't, I don't go that live that often the last time i went live i was just looking was on fourth of july um that was the last video i went live but typically i go live a little bit more often during during the actual season right um so yeah uh, rick said i think the titans got a fourth um so the tweet that ari mariv put out there i, I think that's how you say his name uh, he said the raiders have traded tyree gillespie their fourth round pick in 2021 to the Titans. so i think he was saying that he was a fourth round pick I don't think the Raiders gave up an additional fourth and the player. Um, so, yeah, I, I do appreciate it. Appreciate all of the comments. I'm going through them. Uh, Ty Davis said DeMarcus is gone. Uh, I see uh, a couple of your guys' comments. And we're going to get into it, man. We're definitely going to talk about DeMarcus uh, Robinson. 
let's just get right into it, man. Um, first and foremost, let, let's talk about the five guys that got cut. Uh, you got Vernon Butler, a defensive tackle. Nate Brooks, uh, I believe he was a cornerback. Demarcus Robinson, obviously the wide receiver, and I think that's like the major one. Uh, Tyron Wheatley Jr., who was a tackle, and Gary Green, who was a defensive end. Uh, Tyron Wheatley Jr., Gary Green were both guys that came in from the past regime. Uh, Tyron Wheatley was signed some at some point last year, and Gary Green was brought in, I think, two years ago for the first time. He was a more of a practice squad uh, guy. Um, but these guys all got cut, five guys, five players. And I think for me, the one that surprised me the most was Vernon Butler. Uh, Vernon Butler just got back, right? Or, I'm sorry, he just got signed, right? Uh, and we don't have our guys back yet. We still have Jonathan Hankins, who's hurt. Uh, so, and I think Belil Nichols might be out at the moment too. Uh, don't quote me on that, but uh, Vernon Butler got, got freaking cut, which is, which is crazy, right? Um, and the thing with Vernon Butler is a lot of us have felt that our defensive line is, isn't all that great on the inside. Uh, we needed the help. And Butler was a guy that we felt he would come to the Raiders and potentially help this, this defensive line unit out. Now, I think the thing that surprises me with Vernon Butler is the fact that he's a veteran and he has had some, some sack production. And none of the other guys really have. But I will say this. Uh, the one guy that's flashed for me on tape on the interior defensive line, I'm going to be honest, you guys, is Andrew Billings. Andrew Billings has looked really, really, really good. And what's crazy about Billings is he's not, like, super old, um, but he's massive, like, uh, Andrew Billings has, I, I believe he's playing nose too, right? So I guess that's the first thing we should confirm. Andrew Billings is, is playing nose. Um, and I think Vernon Butler was brought in to be more of that like defensive tackle or D end as some people want to call it in the three, four scheme. Um, but he's the guy that was supposed to play like that four eye or five technique. Um, so that's like, that's, that's kind of interesting. If you're going to get rid of that type of player, what do you guys have that you guys feel is is already there, or or are you guys keeping that extra spot? Remember, uh, we cut five guys. We went from ninety to eighty five, and then we released, or I'm sorry, we traded Tyree Gillespie. So we got eighty four players. So maybe there's a defensive tackle that the Raiders may look to trade for. Maybe there's a defensive tackle the Raiders may sign. Right? Maybe it's in Dama Su. Maybe it's someone else. Um, at the same time, maybe it's the right tackle that the Raiders want to bring. Right? Uh, so I think there's a lot that you have to consider with these guys that are cut. Uh, a receiver gets cut, uh, a safety gets traded, a tackle ends up getting cut, a defensive end, a corner, and a uh, obviously a defensive back one in Vernon Butler. So there's definitely a lot of lot of space here. Aunt Six Soldier uh, makes a similar comment, and big shout out to you, man. I really, really, really appreciate all of your comments, uh, and you're always leaving super chats. Uh, you know this, and and just for the for you guys that don't know this, anyone that leaves super chats, man, it's always super super helpful because it is the way you can support the channel. A lot of my videos do get demonetized, especially the film breakdown videos because the footage is technically not mine. So I I get it, um, but the super chats always appreciate it. You said eighty four players can only sign one D tackle or tackle, and who? Um, so we have 84 players on the roster right now. So we have space to go out and get one guy. Uh, who is that one guy going to be? I think there's a, a couple of options that the Raiders could absolutely target. Um, I was on Twitter earlier and uh, some guys that I saw that got cut that I think could have a lot of potential. Uh, defensive tackle Sheldon Day is out there, which is kind of crazy that he would get cut. Um, Jordan Jenkins, uh, although I'm not really sure if he's a guy that I target. Uh, Jamar Johnson got cut, and that one was surprising. I, I don't even know if that's 100% confirmed, but Jamar Johnson was just drafted by the Denver Broncos in the fifth round last offseason, and I love Jamar Johnson. Man, the guy, although he's a little bit shorter, is very, very impressive, and he got cut, and I understand because of the fact that um, Jamar Johnson is not is he's not with this new regime, right? The Denver Broncos got a brand new regime in, with Nathaniel Hackett. Uh so, again, I, I think there's definitely a lot of players that we can target. Sue, obviously, is a player that everyone wants. And besides Sue, I think, like, Daryl Williams could potentially be a good fit at right tackle. I believe Dewan, uh, Dwayne Brown just got picked up recently. He got a massive contract. I think Daryl Brown's going to get a massive contract, too. Now, uh, if the Raiders don't sign a tackle, I think the only reason why you don't sign a tackle is because you think Jermaine Illuminor could potentially step up. And I love Jermaine Illuminor. Right? I think he has a lot of potential for the Raiders. Um, 
But yeah, uh, Vernon Butler was definitely surprising. Um, a, a couple other people that I feel like, uh, or another guy that got cut that kind of was surprising to a lot of people was Demarcus Robinson. Uh, and we're going to talk about Demarcus Robinson here. Uh, here's the thing with Demarcus Robinson. He was brought in at a time before some of these guys that we have recently flashed, right? Uh, Demarcus Robinson obviously came to the Raiders and we're high on him, right? Like we're like, right, this guy could be legit for the Raiders. Um, DJ Turner had a great game this past this past week. Um, even a guy like Keelan Cole was brought in after Demarcus Robinson. And I feel like Keelan Cole is a guy that has a lot of upside. Uh, Demarcus Robinson, you know, I, I said this kind of when we brought him in. He played with Patrick Mahomes, and he was the number two wide receiver at one point with Patrick Mahomes. After Tyreek Hill, he was number two, right, before McCole Hardman really kind of took over his role. And he didn't do anything, right? So if you can't do something in that scheme system, that Andy Reid uh, system with Patrick Mahomes as your quarterback, how much are you going to do with the Raiders being like the fourth or fifth option here, right? Um, I think the upside with some of the other guys makes a ton more sense. Um but what do you guys think about Demarcus Robinson? I want to get into some of your guys' comments. And we're going to talk about Nate Brooks, Gary Green, and Tyron Wheatley because I think the Gary Green cut is kind of interesting too. Of course, we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, Anthony said DJ Turner might be the reason Robinson got cut. I could not agree more with you, man. Uh, I, I think this was probably the exact reason. Uh, I believe DJ Turner had three catches for like 53 yards or, or something around that. And a touchdown, of course, right? He had the, the the one touchdown. And one of the crazy things about his touchdown, people don't think about it, right? It's different if you run deep and your quarterback delivers the pass and you catch it in the end zone. DJ Turner caught a 12-yard pass and he ran it 20 or, or about 20 extra yards, right? Uh, which is different, right? Two completely different things. Like DJ Turner made yards after the catch. Completely different. Uh, big shout out to you, Digital Press. I really appreciate you, man. Uh, if you guys are not subscribed, go check his channel out, man. The guy puts out good content. Uh, definitely check it out. Uh, some people are talking about uh, Brandon Parker. Uh, Walter said Parker is coming back right. Um, John V said Parker was our best right tackle. I've heard Brandon Parker is not coming back. Uh, John V also said, is Brandon Parker in the IR yet? What's up with him? Uh, here's the thing. Uh, I, I know Mitchell... Uh, Rents reported this, that uh, Brandon Parker was already on the IR. I think he posted that to his Twitter. Um, I don't know if that part of it is 100% correct, but he is correct when he says Brandon Parker is done for the year because Brandon Parker, from what I heard, got hurt during the Hall of Fame game. Uh, so some people, I think, also put it out there that he got hurt working out or something like that. Um, from what I've heard, Brandon Parker is done for the year, and he got hurt during the Hall of Fame game. So I don't expect Brandon Parker back. The guy that I heard this from is very solid, and I 100% believe what he said to be true. Um, so I think Brandon Parker is done um, for, for the year, to be honest, you guys. A digital press said, uh, salute Jesse. I always salute to Jesse, man. Big, big, big shout out to you. Um, I appreciate you, man, for reals. Uh, let's, let's get into some more comments. David Dupree Jr., shout out to you for the super sticker. Uh, super helpful. I always appreciate it. Hit the thumbs up button as usual. Let's get into Super Chats, man. If you guys have questions and want to be featured on the channel, Super Chats are the way to go. Uh, I will get into 99.9% .9 of Super Chats. So there's very few Super Chats I won't get into. Uh, RC Raider says, I think DeMarcus was cut to make room for DJ Turner. Uh, as we talked about, that is absolutely the reason why DeMarcus Robinson was cut. Um, it makes sense to roll forward with the younger guy, not the guy that, you know, is 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 kind of average, right? Not, not all that great. So... Um, it's going to be interesting, man, to really see what the Raiders do in terms of that additional uh, spot. Um, the Gary Green cut was also kind of interesting. And, and I say that because uh, there was a time recently when we saw the unofficial depth chart and Gary Green was listed as the number two defensive end, uh, but behind one of the defensive end spots. So technically, he was like the number three defensive end. And behind him was Malcolm Coons. Some people were like, what the hell is going on? We thought Malcolm Coons is this guy and this and this and that. I think Malcolm Coons is still the guy. I, I think Malcolm Coons is the Raiders' number three defensive end, and I wouldn't be surprised if he overtakes Chandler Jones soon. I know some people don't like hearing me say that because I see your guys' comments about that, about me making that statement. Uh, it's a bold prediction, right? It is a, it, but it is my prediction, right? And I do think uh, Malcolm Coons, what he flashes on tape, is special. Um, you know, if somehow the Raiders were to cut him this year, I, I would be super angry about it, but I doubt that's going to happen. 
the guy's too good uh, for him to get cut, obviously. Um, but Gary Green is interesting, man, because in my opinion, uh, Gary Green has, you know, he's a massive football player. He's strong, right? He's very quick, very athletic, very twitchy, but he's really raw, right? He didn't have pass rushing skills, doesn't have the great hands that like Malcolm Kuntz and Max Crosby have. Uh, but he has like everything else, right? Like you can make the argument Gary Green may have been our most athletic defense then. But as you and I know, being athletic does not mean you're going to 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 make the um, to make the active roster, right? Being athletic doesn't really mean anything. To be 100% honest with you guys, um, what matters is your hands. And I will say that you can have the most unathletic player that has great hands, and he'll be better than the most athletic player that has no hands, right? That's that's just what defense men has come to. And Gary Green had a lot of good things going. He just was, doesn't have the hands. But another thing to note is Gary Green also is not a, a Raider. He's not this regime, right? Gary Green, I believe this was his third year. I think we've had him for the last two years. I think he came in 2020 as a UDFA to the Raiders. But Gary Green's interesting because I, I do think that if he develops, right, kind of like Lester Cotton, right, and we'll talk about Lester Cotton a little bit later on, the way Lester Cotton developed, Gary Green could technically develop the same way. Um, but again, I'm not surprised that he got cut, right? Like, it's just not, it's just, he's just not the type of guy that's going to stick around on this roster. Um, another interesting player that got cut was Tyron Wheatley Jr. Um, I'm not surprised he got cut. He's very big, very athletic as well, but I just didn't see him. And obviously, he was never going to start. I believe Tyron Wheatley was playing left tackle. And I think Bamadil Olasini may have beat him out. I, I, you know, got to keep in mind, these first five guys are the five guys that this team obviously felt were, A, not ready to compete, or they just got flat out beat out. Uh, and there's maybe a rookie or something like that that has more upside. And I think between Tyron Wheatley as well as Bamadil Olasini, I think Bamadil Olasini has more potential. You know, Bamadil Olasini is not ready to start today. I, not at all. And he did a great job. I think he played seven snaps in the Hall of Fame game and seven snaps in this past game. And he did a pretty good job. He moves people. He's big. He's strong. Uh, but he's obviously not going to start at left tackle today. He's a super long-term developmental prospect, right? He has some things that he needs to obviously fix up. Uh, but I think that is why Tyron Wheatley gets cut. I think Bamadil has more upside and he's a rookie. And you take that over Tyron Wheatley, uh, who... Is he really going to be a backup left tackle? Who knows, right? I, I Another thing I guess you can think about is uh, Jermaine Illuminor played left tackle this past game. Illuminor has been the Raiders' right tackle in camp, right tackle, right guard. Um, and before the Raiders game, they asked him to play left tackle. I'm sorry, the night before the Raiders game, they asked him to play left tackle, and he made the move. He said, I'll absolutely do it. A story that a lot of people don't know, uh, when it comes to the Raiders' offense line, uh, Jackson Barton was – slated to start at left tackle for the Raiders. Uh, Jackson Barton thought to himself that he was going to be the starter at left tackle coming in this week. As you guys know, Brandon Park is out for the year. And Jermaine Loomer got the call the day before, and he was told that you're now going to start. So it's kind of crazy to think, but Loomer came in, stepped in, and he did a great job. He had some losing reps, right, which is expected. He's a right tackle, right guard with his right hand down. And then he moved to the other side, and he was asked to put his left hand in the dirt. It's crazy switch. Way different. You can ask me, someone who's made that transition in-game. Very difficult. Uh, but he did a great job uh, to do that. And maybe that's why Tyron Wheatley also got cut. Uh, the last guy that got cut was Nate Brooks. Uh, he was just signed, I think, recently. So I'm not surprised he was cut at all, uh, to be honest with you guys. Um, I, I, Nate Brooks, you know, I, I didn't really see anything from him. He really didn't even stick out, uh, to be honest. I don't even know if he played in the past game. I'm going to assume he for sure did. But... Uh, we have 84 players on the active roster. Who do you guys think the Raiders are going to sign? What position do you guys think the Raiders are going to sign? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, Mr. Marty Mart said Parker will be on the physically unable to perform, but he wants a second opinion. Uh, do we really want to rely on? But do is he a guy we want to rely on? Obviously not, right? Um, Brandon Parker, maybe he goes on the PUP. Maybe he goes on the IR. I don't think Parker plays at all this year. Uh, we'll see what happens. Chemo, uh, shout out to you. Said Parker got hurt all night. Walker and he was whooping his ass. That was sad, man. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Watching Arden Key and a rookie in Trayvon Walker beating up Parker was sad. Now, I will say this. 
Parker obviously got hurt at some point in the Hall of Fame game. Um, and I will say this. How do we know if Brandon Parker did not get hurt and continue to play? Now, obviously, unless he got hurt before the game started, because I think on play one, Trayvon Walker smacked the quarterback. Uh, and then he also gave up a sack like four or five plays later. Um, Parker may have played hurt, right? So we don't 100% sure know. Also, Parker's a right tackle. He's practiced the right side, and we asked him to play left tackle, which I get why the Raiders did that. Obviously, Colt Miller's our left tackle. He's reliable. He's consistent, and he wasn't going to play. But I think the Raiders had had a, a real left tackle to play left tackle in that game, right? Just, just something, just my opinion, right? Uh, Walter said Munford is good and Jermaine. Um, and I also see Raider Rob saying Munford over Parker. Uh, I do think I do think Thayer Munford should make the active roster, right? I, I would be surprised if he's not on the active roster. And I say that because I don't think he's ready to start. Um, if you guys don't know, I literally just did a film breakdown recently. Um, I don't think he is ready to start, to be honest, you guys. But I also do think that the thing with Thayer Munford is he has a lot of potential. Uh, when week six comes around, if Illuminor does not make it at right tackle, if Alex Featherwood does not make it at right tackle, and week six is here and we need a option, I throw Munford in there. I think Thayer Munford has that potential to, to you know, they'll be learning curves and there'll be issues, but you chip, you help him, and he'll get better throughout the season. And by next year, I think Munford could be the Raiders starting right tackle. Right. Obviously, I need to see more from him, but he definitely punches uh, as opposed to uh, uh, Alex Leatherwood, who does not punch. If you guys watched the film study from earlier today, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, if you haven't watched it, make sure you guys go check it out, man. A big shout out to NorCal Raider Jesse, who is a member to the channel. Uh, big shout out to you, man. I always appreciate you as well. He uh, put a, put the channel link to the Football Scout. If you guys are not subscribed to the Football Scout, go check it out, man. It's my second YouTube channel. Uh, crazy quick story. Uh, I hit my first video where I made I got over 100,000 views on a given video. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys rookie left guard Tyler Smith broke down his tape. 100,000 hit that, I think, earlier this morning. So that's the first video on that channel that hit 100,000. Go subscribe if you guys are not subscribed. We do Raiders film breakdowns on that channel too. So uh, Black Raider WP said Darius Milan. Is there a chance the Raiders pick up Darius Milan? I'm going to say no. And, and I say that because I think the chances of the Raiders picking up Darius Milan is the same chance of the Niners or the Patriots or the Buffalo Bills, right? Just because Darius Milan was with the Raiders last year, remember, it's a completely different regime, completely different coaching staff, right? Gus Bradley likes Darius Milan. I think what makes sense for Milan is for him to go 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 to the Colts go follow Gus Bradley I think Bradley could use a guy like Phylon assuming he can prove that he's healthy uh, and I think that makes the most sense for him um so it'll be interesting we'll see what happens with Phylon I personally do not like Darius Phylon uh, for the Raiders I, he's a good player but I, I just don't see him fitting in the scheme and system again we are a 3-4 team Phylon I think is more of a 4-3 guy and I know you know people are going to say well we play nickel defense I want you guys to ask yourselves this is there a difference between a team who plays a 3-4 front and a 4-3 front in the nickel defense? Is there a difference? Or is all nickel defense the same? And I'm going to tell you guys, there is absolutely a difference. Your guys are different. Your defensive tackles you have in there are different. They may be two gapping instead of one gapping. Your inside linebackers are built differently, right? So there is definitely a difference. I don't know if Darius Phylon fits this scheme or system. That's my personal opinion. Could be 100% wrong. Who knows, right? Uh, Mr. Nate Duncan, big, big, big shout out to you. Left a $5 donation. Uh, I really appreciate that, man, for reals. I really do. I don't go live often. I do a lot of film breakdowns. I get demonetized. But when I do go live, these are the best type of ways to support the channel. So I really appreciate it. You said that missed your live videos. You're my favorite post game show besides the official presser. So happy football season is back. LFG Raiders. I appreciate you, man, for reals. I really do. Uh, I might be going live more often, man. Uh, the only issue I have with live videos, you guys know this. I just had a baby a couple months back. I had, it's, been, it's been eight months now, but uh, things have shifted for, for me. You know, I don't have the time to just go live whenever. Got to make sure the baby's fed and see sleeping and all that good stuff. You know, he obviously comes first. Um, but as you guys know, uh, you know, when certain things happen, I will definitely go live. Uh, I'm going to try to go live at least three times a month, right? That's going to be my goal. 
Um, I don't know if I'm going to go live right after the game. I feel like if I go live, you know, videos go all over the place. As you guys probably seen this video, it's more interactive. Uh, if I make a post-game report that's like 10 or 11 minutes, I can just stick to my points, right? So it's a little bit different. I do really appreciate the donation, man, for reals. Um, John B said, Sanji, are you 100% sold on Illuminor? I absolutely am. Uh, you know, if there's one thing that I, I can say that I've done in the past is, is hit on offensive linemen. You know, I might tell you guys that Josh Jacobs, the guy, and he's not. I may tell you guys Jonathan Abrams, the guy, and he's not. I may tell you guys Nate Hobbs, not the guy, and he is, right? Uh, and that's that's because I don't know those positions the same way I know offensive line, right? I'm a former offensive lineman. I've studied offensive line. I've paid thousands of dollars to go learn offensive line play, right? And I'm going to tell you guys right now, Jermaine Illuminor is the guy. Uh, some people are going to say, well, then why has he not started? He's like five, six years in the league. Well, you tell me why Denzel Good didn't start right away and why he was one of the best offensive linemen the Raiders had over the past two or three years, right? Sometimes it takes guys longer. Um, I think Alex Otherwood's a guy where he's not ready today, but I think Alex Otherwood in the future could be ready, right? But the Raiders don't have that time to wait, unfortunately. And I, you know, I said this when the Raiders drafted Alex Otherwood. Uh, that was a mistake. We should have 100% went with Christian Barmore, who is about to become the second best defensive tackle in the league this year. Like, scouts have already projected that NFL scouts are projecting Christian Darisol to become, I'm sorry, uh, Christian Barmore to become the best defensive tackle in the NFL, second best. And the Raiders should have pulled the trigger there. Instead, they took Alex Leatherwood. I thought that was a massive mistake. Even then, they took Leatherwood over Christian Darisol, who is a good left tackle, right? It's just a couple of dumb decisions, right? But I am sold on Jermaine Illuminor. I think he's, you know, I, I think it, he did an interview recently. I can't remember exactly where it was. It may have just been like a Twitter interview uh, where he talks about how I think it was Max Crosby that inspired him to be great and really put more effort than he's ever put in this past offseason. I think he looks better. He looked super explosive this past week at left tackle. Just imagine if he's comfortable playing the right side. Uh, he even played right guard, I think, for one drive. I think when the second half started, he was the right guard next to Alex Sutherland, who was the right tackle. And he only played one drive. And they, I think the Raiders saw what they needed to see from him. If there's one player on positive that will make the team, it's going to be Jermaine Illuminor. Thank you for the comment. I appreciate it, John B. Mr. Nate Duncan, shout out to you for another super chat. You said, anyways, what are you most impressed by so far? Uh, you have to expand on that. But I'm going to go ahead and just think about some things that ha have impressed me so far. I'm going to assume that you're talking about the Raiders roster. Uh, Malcolm Coons. Super freaking impressive, man. Uh, even Divine Diablo. And I, I may have mistakenly said that Divine Diablo had the day off, but some people pointed out he was hurt. Um, I think Divine Diablo looked really good against Jacksonville. Uh, Malcolm Coons, Divine Diablo. I think those two guys have taken the next step. Now, I need to see more from Diablo before I say he's going to be the guy. But Divine Diablo's, uh, or I'm sorry, Malcolm Coons is going to be the guy. The guy looks great man he really does um even less your caught and less your cotton is the real deal which is crazy because uh i'll be the first to tell you guys uh before the draft i love less your cotton right I, I remember reaching out to him on twitter i've told this story before in the past i remember talking to him and having a conversation with him about his time at alabama and how i felt he was a really good tackle i'm sorry a really good guard and uh somehow the raiders just ended up picking him up and I remember talking to him about that. And I remember in his first ever preseason game, I said, this guy, as well as Andre James, looked very good. Um, both guys got cut, but both guys got picked up uh, after their rookie preseason. And both guys were in the practice squad their entire rookie seasons. Um, Alex Otherwood obviously was different. He, he ended up staying like, oh, I'm sorry, Andre James was a little bit different. He ended up uh, staying with, with the Raiders. But Lester Cotton, in his second year, flat out got cut, and he wasn't even on the practice squad. I thought his career was over at that point. And then year three, he was on the active roster a couple of times, right? And now here we come year four, and Lester Cotton is the Raiders starter. That's freaking crazy. Those type of stories don't happen, man. This guy was out of the league in his second year, right? Literally, he was not on a roster at all. Any team could have picked him up. And now he's about to be the Raiders starting right guard. He's the Raiders' second best offensive lineman right now, man. I'm really confident in saying Lester Cotton is the Raiders' second best offensive lineman, which may say their offensive line's not that great. You know, maybe, maybe that's what I'm saying. But uh, it's going to be interesting, man. It's going to be very interesting. Big shout out to you for uh, the super chat. 
Braxton Walters said, how would you feel about packaging a few high draft picks and maybe a player or two for a stud right tackle that's established? Um, it's hard. It's, it, it's hard to say we should absolutely do that. I think what the Raiders need to do is draft a right tackle because if you get a stud right tackle, you're inclined to paying him. If you trade a first round pick or a second round pick or, or multiple picks, you're inclined to making this guy one of the highest paid players at his position. Look at Orlando Brown Jr. The Chiefs are struggling to pay him because he knows what the Chiefs gave up to get him. So he has all the leverage. He knows that he's going to be the highest paid left tackle. The Chiefs don't have the, the cap space to do that, or at least they don't want to do that. And I think if the Raiders went all in and, and traded for a stud right tackle, I think it's a mistake. I think right tackles could be found within the draft. Um, I think there's a lot of good right tackles around the league, right? I think the Eagles have a guy that they may not need necessarily. I can't remember his name on the top of my head, but they drafted him in the first round. I think it's uh, something Dillard or, or something like that. Um I think there's some right tackles around the league. I would not trade a high draft pick, but I would bring a guy in. And I think an option could be Daryl Williams, but I think he's going to want a lot of money. I think he wants like 10 to $15 million. I, I'm, I'm only saying that because uh, Dwayne Brown, who just signed the contract, got a ton of money, right? And I think he held out to get a lot of money. I think Daryl Williams is doing the same thing. I think he's holding out to get himself paid. Um, Richard said 700 people, only 225 likes. There's 773 of you guys right here right now. If you guys could all hit that like button, we should have 700 likes at least. So please consider doing that, man. It really does help this channel. Uh, let's let's get into more of these comments, man. A lot of super chats. Uh, Ram Raiders said, "No way, Coons overtakes uh, Chandler Jones." Never say never, man. I'm gonna tell you guys that right now. Uh, you know, I was talking to Max Crosby once, and uh, he told me that when he was a rookie, uh, he watched one of my videos. It was me sitting in a car. And he told me that in that video, I said that Max Crosby has, he's not going to start this year. There's no way he's not ready to start, right? Yeah, he has some flashes, but he's not ready. And Max Crosby told me that when he watched that video, he told himself that I'm going to prove this guy wrong. I'm going to prove this, this guy sitting in his car wrong. And he proved me wrong. And my point in saying that is when Max Crosby was a rookie, we were all for Cleveland Farrell and all these other guys that we had, Arden Key, right, um, among some other guys. But it was Malcolm Coons that came in and, and overtook Cleveland Farrell, the fourth round pick. It was Max Crosby that overtook these guys that were there before him and became the Raiders' best pass rusher. And I know right now we're going to say Malcolm Coons, there's no way he overtakes Chandler Jones. But you never know what could happen, right? If if Malcolm Coons, and, and think about this, uh, in week one against Jacksonville, Malcolm Coons dominated that Hall of Fame game. He absolutely dominated, in my opinion. Uh, and people were saying, well, he didn't get any sacks. But then in week two or the second preseason game that we played, he got that sack. He ended up actually getting there and he ended up getting home. And I think now the, the statistics actually there, right, um, for, for Malcolm Coons. So, again, never say that he can't potentially overtake someone. Again, I know we invested in Chandler Jones. Um, and I'll be honest and, and be honest. I think Chandler Jones will start, obviously. But if Chandler Jones ends up with three sacks by week 10 and Malcolm Coons has seven sacks by week 10, and Coons has way less snaps, how do you continue having Chandler Jones in there, right? And I'm not saying Chandler Jones is only going to have three sacks, but the guy had five sacks in basically all, all the other games minus the first week of the season, right? People have pointed that out. Um, and he wasn't playing with average defensive players. Chandler Jones had J.J. Watt. He had Isaiah Simmons. He had Buda Baker. Uh, he had some good players on that defense, right? And I'm not saying that the Raiders don't have good players too. Big shout out to Demi by nature. He left the $10 uh, super chat. Always appreciate the content. I appreciate your super chat, man. Uh, more, more so than, you know, me just saying it. I appreciate it more than uh, I could actually say it with words. I, I really do. I, I, I think about these type of comments uh, because I see these, right? When I log into the U YouTube studio, I see the super chats. I see the comments. And these are the ones that I appreciate. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. 619 Raiders said, what's good, Sanjeet? Love your stuff. Keep the great content. I appreciate this comment too, man. Thank you. I, I really, really, really appreciate it. You know, it's crazy because, uh, you know, Raider Nation's a massive fan base, massive uh, people everywhere within Raider Nation. You know, I, I was in Sacramento recently. Uh, and walking around, I go to Target. I see a guy who has a Raiders hat on. We start talking Raiders. Uh, we, you know, I, I go to a, a different place and I see a Raider guy. We start talking Raiders. You know, we, we talk Raiders all the time. Uh, it's it's really the best fan base, man. I, I really always appreciate everyone who supports. Uh, I always see your guys' comments too. So 
a big shout out to all you guys. Uh, Sean said, what happened to Farrell? I thought he was an outside linebacker. Haven't seen him in the games or heard any news. WTF happened to him. Love the gentleman. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm not sure what the hell's going on with Clinton Farrell. I wouldn't be surprised if the Raiders are trying to trade him. Clinton Farrell hasn't been practicing, so that's why we haven't seen him, him playing. Um, I don't know if Cleveland Farrell is going to be a Raider by the time the season comes along. And that's, again, me just kind of projecting based off of what we're seeing, right? Like, it's the same thing with Darren Waller. People are saying he wants a contract and he may not play. He may hold out, right? People are saying those things. And obviously, those are rumors. But uh, I think even with Cleveland Farrell, you have to think. Like, he was, you know, he's in year four. Uh, he had his fifth-year option declined. You could technically cut him, although I don't know how that impacts the uh, compensatory picks that come in the NFL draft. I know that if the Raiders keep him on the roster and he walks and signs with someone else, we may get a third round pick for Cleveland Farrell walking, right? That happens. You draft a guy, he goes to another team and he signs with another team. You get that additional pick. So we may get a third round pick for keeping him on the roster this year. Plus he is owed $10 million. But if a team says we'll give you a fourth round pick, you know, uh, would you take a fourth round pick? Or would you rather have Cleveland Farrell by the bench? You know, so uh, definitely consider that. Um, I obviously do want Cleveland Farrell to work out. I just don't know if he's going to, right? And and this is one of the unfortunate parts with the Mike Mayock and John Gruden era. I appreciate Mike Mayock so much. You know, he's he really found some very, 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 very good players, right? It was his scouting department that found uh, Max Crosby. It was his scouting department that found Hunter Renfro and Nate Hobbs, uh, Andre James, right? Lester Cotton. It was Mike Mayock and his scouting department that found all these guys. Uh, but the thing is, is we don't know who picked Cleveland Farrell, who wanted Cleveland Farrell. We don't know who wanted Damon Arnett. Uh, I've heard from people what they've told me, and I, I don't really know if it's 100% fact or not. Um, but the thing is, is when you look at the Cleveland Farrell pick, and I love Mike Mayock, you, how do you defend that? You know, it's such a terrible pick. Um, you guys can go back and look at the videos. I wanted Josh Allen or, or Devin White. Those are the two guys I wanted. And you can look at where those guys are today, right? I, I, it's just hard to defend the pick. Uh, but I would I would trade Farrell if he doesn't work. If, if Patrick Graham does not think he can get the best out of him, I would trade him, man. Uh, old man's Raider Nation, big shout out to you for being a member. Uh, you said the team has two problems, right tackle and defensive tackle. These are the two things that worry me. It's the two things that worry me as well, to be 100% honest. And right tackle, I'm not worried necessarily if we start the correct players. But if the Raiders think that we're going to be able to start, um, if, if the Raiders think we're going to be able to go and start Alex Leatherwood and that's going to fix our problems, I just I just don't see it. Honestly, I don't think that's, that's going to, to be good for the Raiders. Now, if they stay, we're going to start Jermaine Illuminor. I'm all for it. I think Illuminor has a lot of potential. And I do think that what I've seen from Illuminor, it makes sense to keep a guy like him. Uh, defensive tackle, it's hard to really judge, in my opinion, because you do have a couple of different pieces, a couple of different players. Um, and you don't really know if these guys are going to translate. Even last year, we we're saying, I don't really know about our defense tackles. But then, boom, here comes Darius Bylon. Uh, Solomon Thomas did some, some good things, right? So, it's hard with the defensive tackles. Jimmy C said we tried paying for a right tackle, which was Trent Brown, uh, and that is fact. We did try to get Trent Brown at one point. Obviously, that never worked out for the Raiders. Unfortunate. Uh, Tino left the $5 super sticker. Uh, I really appreciate that, man. I really, really do appreciate that. Um, you know, as you guys know, super stickers, super chats, uh, super things, all, all those super things are are supportive of this channel. So big shout out to you, Tino. I really do appreciate it. Uh, old man Raider said Koontz is what, 24? Jones is what, 33? I see Koontz playing more than we think. Absolutely, man. I uh, could not agree more with you on that one. Because uh, Zobi said this is the only Raiders channel I watch. Big shout out to you, man. Uh, there's a couple good ones out there, man. Go check out uh, Raid the Tape. Go check out Andy's channel. Go check out Wasted and Graphic. Uh, Samoans Legit. Um, and I know I'm missing some people, but uh, there's some good good people out there, man. Make sure you check all of those guys out. Uh, and definitely uh, go to the people that know Raiders football, man. Don't don't go to those people who uh, try to present their, their stuff in a good way but have no idea what they're talking about. Uh, make sure you go check out the good channels. Uh, Mr. Marty Martz said, knowledge, your Raiders fan. Uh, I, I appreciate you guys, man, for reals. I really, really, really do appreciate you guys. 
Uh, Jimmy C says, Sanji, does Derek Carr watch you or are you on the block list? Uh, Derek Carr has me blocked on Instagram, but not on Twitter. Uh, I think he blocked me on Instagram for posting a clip. It was the final clip where he threw an interception. Uh, some people started tagging him, which, you know, I understand that. Uh, but, yeah, Derek Carr does have me blocked. I don't know if he watches me. He, he may. Uh, you know, uh, you know, you guys post these comments, right? Um, maybe not these live videos, but when I make a video and I say, you know, Derek Carr does this and you guys post comments, Derek Carr one day is going to come across that. Right. And I guarantee you these players watch these videos more often than, than you guys realize, because I've had players tell me. Right. I talk to a lot of Raider players. They tell me that they read comments on these videos and they see what people are saying about them, especially when the video has their name in it. Right. Uh, so maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. But uh, let's let's hope, man, Derek Carr takes us to the Super Bowl this year, man. I'd, I'd be really, really, really excited for that. Uh, let's get into a couple more of these uh, comments. Uh, Aunt Six Soldier said, uh, Sanji, who's the best for who, who's the four best pass rushers on this team? And if we run a NASCAR package, who's on the D line? Thanks for everything you do. A uh, big shout out to you, man. I again, I always really, really appreciate you. Um, let's let's talk about that, man. The, the Raiders do have four good pass rushers, in my opinion. Uh, the first pass rusher is obviously Max Crosby. The second pass rusher is obviously Chandler Jones. At, at least that's what most people think. I think it's Malcolm Coons, but I'll leave it at Chandler Jones. A uh, number three is Chandler or is is Malcolm Coons, right? And those are the three best pass rushers that the Raiders have. Number four gets a little bit tricky, right? Because the Raiders have some good defensive linemen, um, but you know when it comes to solely pass rushing, solely great hands, it's kind of hard to say which guy it is, right? Um, Kyler Fraka was a guy that I liked. I liked his hands. I think he's out for the year. Um, Vernon Butler, I liked his hands. He just got cut, right? And I think Vernon Butler didn't really play, which makes sense. Andrew Billings is a guy that I like. Uh, I don't know how his pass rushing skills are. Um, he has good ability to, uh, to collapse the pocket. And I like that, right? I like his ability to collapse the pocket. So, um, maybe he, maybe it's him, right? So there's definitely some guys... But I will say we do need to make sure we have a fourth solid pass rusher, and it has to be an interior defensive lineman because we don't need four outside guys because you can't have four guys, right? Um, in terms of a NASCAR package, I think it's hard to really put it together. But I do think that Max Crosby would jump to the inside. I think Koontz and Jones play the outsides. Max Crosby jumps to the inside. And I don't really know who else it would be um, because we would need, ho hopefully, a smaller a guy that can get after the quarterback. But I do appreciate your comment. Uh, I, I see a lot of you guys in super chats. Phillips in my little bro, and I love your channel, Sanjeet Raiders. Big shout out to you, Philip. I really appreciate you and your brother, and I appreciate the super chat. David Miller left the ten dollars super chat. Big, big shout out to you, man. I really do appreciate the super chat, uh, especially without a comment, man. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, shout out to uh, my guy, wasted man. Uh, if you guys are not subscribed to his channel, go click his channel, man. The guy puts out great Raiders content. He's a guy that's actually knowledgeable, man. I'm telling you guys, not every Raider person out there is knowledgeable about the Raiders. Not every person knows what they're talking about. This guy does, man. So go check him out. A uh, shout out to him. Um, a, a shout out to NorCal Raider Jesse once again. Uh, let's get into the next next super chat. This one comes from Ty Davis. He said, speaking of what happened with Raider to Raid today, uh, got to ask. I'm not 100% sure what you're talking about. I was talking with uh, Raid the Tape earlier today. Uh, I don't know if it was his tweet. Uh, you're going to have to ask him about that. But thank you for the super chat. I do appreciate it. Donovan, shout out to you. Uh, you did leave a question under your super chat. You said we have 83 on the active roster. Parker is going on the IR. That's actually a good point. I didn't think about that. The Raiders have 83 players, so we could technically sign two. I think it's just a matter of time until they actually report that uh, Brandon Parker is going to the IR confident in saying that uh from the source that i've heard that from uh parker did not get hurt during a workout or at the gym or whatever he got hurt during the hall of fame game right and th those are facts hurt during the hall of fame game he is going to be on the ir he's going to be out for the year uh so we should have 83 spots so uh, we may sign two guys so we'll see what happens uh sheldon scott said do you think mullen will be ready for week one do you think hobbs is coming back one uh nate hobbs is definitely cornerback one man uh, there's there's no way he is not. Uh, Nate Hobbs is definitely the cornerback one, in my opinion. 
Uh, Trayvon Mullen, I think, is looking on the outside in. I, I really do think that because uh, when you look at Trayvon Mullen, he's not a Patrick Graham guy, right? Trayvon Mullen isn't a guy who fits this scheme and system. At least we don't know, right? And the coaches don't know. I don't want to say it, but what if Trayvon Mullen gets cut? You know, it could happen. In my opinion, Nate Hobbs is cornerback one. Rocky has seen, we've heard the entire uh, offseason how great he's looked. He hasn't played in preseason for a reason. He's obviously cornerback two. Anthony Averett hasn't played in the preseason because he's the slot corner. So there's your three corners right there, which means how many cornerbacks do you keep? I think we keep five. So there's two other spots. I don't know if Trayvon Mullen gets one of those spots. I think uh, Webb has looked really solid, right? He's made multiple pass breakups. Uh, so I think he gets a spot. And maybe he's on the practice squad. We'll see. But uh, I think Trayvon Mullen, I think there's a roster spot for him. I wouldn't cut him until we see what we have. He was a second-round pick. Um, so we'll see what ends up happening, right? We'll definitely see what ends up happening. Um, big shout-out to you, Sheldon. I, I really do appreciate it. Uh, big shout-out to TJ. He said, nice thumbnails. How do you feel about the secondary and who becomes our lockdown slot corner? Big shout out to you, cousin. I really appreciate that. Uh, I think our secondary is, is, is going to be interesting this year. I really do. Um, I don't know how great Merrick's going to become. I, I think Merrick's a good football player. And, you know, when I watch his tape, uh, he does some things good. But, you know, I, I oftentimes say this. There's a difference between a safety who runs freely, plays freely, right? A guy like Charles Woodson, a guy like Ed Reed, a guy like Brian Harmon, right? These guys that run around freely versus a guy who reads and then reacts. Jonathan Abram is a read and reactor. Um, Tyree Gillespie was a read and reactor. Trayvon Merrick, from what I've watched in the first two games, he's a read and reactor. And those players are different. They don't get the same amount of uh, impactful plays. Now, Trayvon Merrick is obviously quick, great hips. He does a lot of great things. Uh, can run sideline to sideline, which is a big deal for for safeties. Great man-to-man -man safety, right? Uh, I think last year, at the end of the year, he was tasked with covering tight ends, man-to-man. -man. I think he's going to do that this year. So I don't know how great he'll be. I don't, I'm don't. i not really sold on Jonathan Abram anymore, especially with this scheme and system. But I will say that uh, we we tested the big nickel package. If you guys know what I'm talking – if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, hit me up on Instagram and Twitter. You guys will see posts. Uh, John Labram lined up as a slot cornerback, but it's considered a big nickel. Uh, you take away your nickel cornerback, you put a safety in, you use three safeties. You got two guys that cover for the Raiders. That's Deron Harmon on one side, Tyree Gillespie on the other. And the, the nickel, the big nickel is going to be uh, John Labram, and he blitzed and he had some success. Uh, so I don't know what he is in terms of this Raiders scheme and system, Um but it'll be interesting, right? Now, I think our secondary in terms of cornerbacks is solid. I think we have three solid cornerbacks. Uh, I think Nate Hobbs is, is going to ascend into a top 10 corner this year. He has way too much skill for that not to happen. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's really good. And he's not our slot corner anymore. Nate Hobbs is an outside cornerback. He's, he's too good to put into the slot. Plus, I've heard Anthony Averett is the slot corner, and I expect him to start at the slot. Uh, plus, you know, 20% of the time, uh, you're not playing nickel defense. You'll be playing base defense, which means are you going to take your best cornerback out? You know, so I, I put Nate Hobbs on the outside. I appreciate the comment, man, uh, and the super chat, definitely. Uh, we have a new member, Tino. Big shout out to you, man. I really, really, really appreciate it. Uh, we have a lot of members to this channel, and I, I say this all the time, but I'm going to start posting more, more uh, members-only content. Uh, it'll be videos. I mean, just talking, man, you know, I see something happen and it'll be a three minute video. And the hope is that YouTube gets it together. They're a members only content and the way it looks isn't very helpful for people like us as content creators. Um, but I appreciate it. You know, I really do appreciate it. Uh, the greatness of the Raiders said, how many defense tackles will we keep? Uh, I think the Raiders need to definitely keep a lot of defense tackles because we're running a three, four. Uh, so you need the different types of guys, right? You need at least two nose tackles for sure, right? I think mean, Hankins should be one of them. Uh, and then I think Neil Farrell is going to be your other nose. But Andrew Bill, uh, you know, I, I don't know. That's actually a good question. I think Andrew Billings played nose this past week, and he was very solid. That's a hard question, man. It really is. I'm going to say we keep about five defensive tackles, five defensive ends for a total of 10 defensive linemen. Probably keep five linebackers and five corners and five safeties. Puts yellow 25, 30 players. 
Um, so yeah, it's gonna be interesting, man. But I, I am gonna end the video here. If you guys could press that thumbs up button before you guys leave, I would really appreciate it. We're gonna go live more often, man. So I really appreciate all of you guys, man. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.